Uh, the Canadian Football League is coming down to the final three weeks of the regular season, and for the first time since 1948, the province of Alberta will not be represented, as the Stampeders and Elks both eliminated this week. Um, Edmonton, in their loss to Winnipeg, who are making statements right now. This is a couple blowout wins in a row, and we have said for a bit that they're winning games, but it's still not looking as impressive as it should. Now it is. Um, th this team is looking really scary offensively. This defense has always been really good, and they look like the most complete team in the Canadian Football League right now, and that is concerning that they are peaking at the right time and looking like the road to the Grey Cup is going to go through Winnipeg uh, this season. Uh, they have won something like eight in a row now, right? It, it is, I believe that that is uh, what, what the win streak is at at this point. Um, it, it's it's been a bunch in a row. That that is certainly for sure. Um, it has been. It, it's been a really impressive run. Um, oh, and of course, the CFL website wouldn't have um, the actual, you know, streak stats or anything like that. Um, and so, okay, coming into this week, it was seven in a row. So yes, eight in a row that Winnipeg has won now. Um, coming off of this, and the last couple have been dominant as hell. And it is really, really scary for them. Uh, for the BC Lions, they needed a win like that. They eliminate the Stampeders. The offense gets them 32 points. It's still not perfect, but it is getting there. And you talk about scary teams. Like, the, the way that this offense can move with Rorick at quarterback makes them, makes them a team you would really have to worry about. But the fact that they... Right now, if the playoffs were to start today, they'd have to play two road games, one in Saskatchewan, one in Winnipeg. Uh, to be able to then host the Grey Cup, which would be pretty funny, is... Less than ideal, but the way that this offense is coming together, and I still think that this defense can be quite good. Um, things are looking up in, in BC. For Calgary, we'll do more on this probably later on in the week. Um, it's just so clear it's not working here. Major changes are needed. I, I, I think the roster's bad. I think that it has been a very poorly constructed football team for a bit now, and I think Dave Dickinson is a really good coach, and I think he should probably just stick to that. And that's that. Um, I, I, I just, I think you have to make some major changes in Calgary because it's not working and you are falling farther and further and further behind right now. In Saskatchewan, the Riders get in, um, clinching a playoff spot this week. It's not perfect, but Corey Mace has done something that we talked about around these parts for a bit. He needed to change the culture out in Saskatchewan and boy, howdy did he with a, um, a really good job coaching this year. And now it looks like Saskatchewan could be getting a home playoff game. Uh, we'll see how the last couple of weeks of this regular season play out. But uh, big, big stuff happening in Saskatchewan. I think Corey Mace deserves a ton of credit for what he has done. And now, like, I know I just said every team in the West, oh boy, dangerous. Um, I, I do think Saskatchewan is kind of the least dangerous of all of them. Um, but I do think with that defense, they are going to be a problem. And with the turnovers that they're able to face, the pressure they're able to get on the quarterback, um, that they have so many weapons offensively that this is... The, the West playoffs are going to be really... The whole playoffs, I think, are going to be really interesting. Although the East does feel like it's kind of fallen off after a great start this year. Uh, toxic. PK low-key likes the shit on the Stamps as a Ryder fan. Look, I, I gave the Stamps all their flowers when they were going on that run. And I was saying... As, as someone who has uh, cheered for a team who has existed for over 100 years and has four Grey Cup championships, runs like what the Stampeders have don't come around all that often. So, A, take advantage of it, and I don't think they did, but B, celebrate it, because it is going to turn at some point, and now it really has turned. And the the, the thing is, is that, like, I, I don't take, um, I was going to say I don't take joy in seeing the Stampeders lose. I take some. Because I had to, I, I had to do sports reports while the Stampeders are beating the Riders in Saskatchewan in the postseason, and while the the Stamps are seventeen and one and riding off to Grey Cups, uh, which they lose, and doing all of these things, and I just had to sit there and just be like, "Yep, no, they're they're doing it. On they go. Isn't that great?" So yeah, there's a little bit of me that's like, "This is this is fine," but also it is. Like, when something is wrong, you, you have to call it out. And right now, what's happening here is just, it's wrong, and it is bad. And it is potentially very damaging, because this was a fan base that was kind of dwindling when things were going well. And so, if the team's bad, um, that doesn't do a whole lot to grow the audience. I will say that. 